I'm sure you have seen hundreds of videos talking about the current economic slowdown that India is facing. But do you know the core reasons behind this slowdown? There are both short term as well as long term reasons which are behind the slowdown that India is facing presently. Today we are going to break down the economic slowdown and, and understand the core reasons behind the slowdown due to which the youth of India is facing high unemployment presently. Let us start. Before moving forward with the video, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon if you like the video in order to get regular notifications about such amazing economic and financial videos. The reasons behind economic slowdown can be divided into two parts, the long term structural problems and the short term immediate problems. Now these long term structural problems are the core reasons that now India is into another cycle of economic slowdown and may dive deep into recession as well in the future. Whereas the short term immediate reasons are the reasons that we normally hear about and normally talk about in newspapers as well as in the media. However, these immediate problems are not the reasons for consistent slowdown that India is facing. These core reasons are the reasons behind consistency of the slowdown and strengthening of the slowdown and conversion of it into a recession. Let us first talk about the long term structural reasons which are at the core of the slowdown. The first one is institutional reforms. You must have heard about institutional reforms, read about it in a lot of books, but do you actually understand what exactly is the meaning of institutional or structural reforms that are pending in India? Let us understand. In the 1960s, we had a narrow view on economics because India did not have even the basic necessities of life. We wanted to develop our agriculture and the panacea was given as green revolution, which we adopted very successfully. We wanted to focus on our heavy industries because the manufacturing sector was in its primitive stages in India at that point of time. The heavy industries were focused upon by Mahalanobis model in the industrial policy resolution of 1956. The third one was trade liberalization, which is also called as LPG reforms, which was adopted by India by force in the year 1991. Now, all these three reasons and a lot of other major methods that were followed were narrow in their point of view because they focused upon immediate gratification or immediate conversion of things into money. However, the basic structural reasons which are at the foundation of every economy were pending at that time as well. You must have heard about license Raj permit. You must have heard about corruption and red tapeism in India. You must have heard about discretion that lies with the government, both state as well as the center. Transforming those areas is called as structural reforms, which are still pending. Let us understand them very briefly. 2000 onwards, basically after 1991 and after the reforms of 1991 subsided, we felt the need of second generation reforms. Popularly, these reforms are called as requirement of the republic, although India is already a republic, but requirement of the republic means providing freedom to people to pursue whatever they want to do. For example, let's say I have studied till 12th and I do not have a lot of qualifications. So I decide to sell food on the street. I'm good at cooking. Now, there are a lot of problems that I'll be facing if, if I start or if I decide to get into this business. First of all, the exploitation that I'll be facing by the police is given in India. This is because of discretion that police is provided in the country. Secondly, I will be facing the problem of finances because I am entering an unorganized sector and therefore banks will not be very willing to provide me funds. Similarly, I will be facing a lot of problems and the reasons, the core reasons behind these problems is that, is that there is no proper method or there is no proper rules and laws in order to ensure my survival or my pursuit of freedom. These are called as the pending institutional reforms. If these institutional reforms are in reality carried out in the economy, then the private sector and the civil society are capable enough of carrying out these reforms themselves because they know that they can rely on various laws, rules and regulations that the country has created for smooth functioning of the economy. Now, it is not true that the economy has not done anything or the policy makers have not have been sleeping this entire time. A lot of piecemeal solutions like APMC, Land Sealing Act and back nationalization were carried out as a part of second generation reforms even before the first generation reforms were complete. However, majority of these solutions like APMC, Land Sealing Act and bank nationalization have come back to bite us. For example, APMC Act was passed to create a holistic interlink between the farmer and the consumer. 
However, APMCs, that is intermediaries, have resulted in exploitation of farmers as well as consumers. Similarly, a lot of reforms which were carried out by the economy, by the policy makers, have resulted in pullback of the economy rather than pushing them forward for the reasons that they were piecemeal and at the same time they were not well thought out. What is the final impact of lack of institutional reforms? Reforms like Make in India or programs like Make in India have stalled. Because if the domestic as well as foreign investors do not have confidence in the economy, do not have confidence in the policies of the economy, they prefer setting themselves somewhere else. In this case, China. Let's come to the second reason now. The second reason is connected very strongly with the first reason, but it is also separate in its own way. The reason is middle income trap. For example, India was in the low development stage from 1950s to 1990s because of what we call as Hindu rate of growth. This low development stage was broken by first level reforms or first generation reforms which we popularly call as LPG reforms in India. Liberalization, privatization and globalization were the first level of reforms also the narrow economic reforms which enabled our economy to transform into a higher per capita G GNP. However, when an economy gets stuck at that higher range of GNP, then the economy is called to be stuck in middle income trap. We will understand middle income trap in more details very shortly. In order to get out of this middle income trap, we need to carry out institutional reforms, which I've already explained in the previous first reason. Now, these institutional reforms can be classified briefly as reforms related to economic regulation, contract enforcement, conflict management and need for complex contracts. For example, the patent laws in India are still very archaic and therefore companies are unable to enforce their contracts, unable to enforce their patent laws. As a result, highly innovating companies prefer to go to countries like USA, Germany, China instead of coming to India. Now, what exactly is middle income trap? We have understood how middle income trap is created, but what is middle income trap? Now, this is a chart given by World Bank, which classifies countries based on their per capita income. The low income countries are those where per capita income or the average income per individual in the economy is $1,005 or less in a year. A country transforms into lower middle income country group if this per capita income increases from 1005 to 3955 and it transforms further into upper middle income country when it transforms to 3956 up to a range of 12 to 35 US dollars per year. Above that are the countries who are called as high income countries. When an economy gets stuck into either lower middle income country group or higher middle income country group, that is 1006 to 12 to 35 US dollars per year, then it is classified as a country stuck in middle income trap. Let us understand why and how India has got stuck in this. As you can see in these charts, you can figure out that India is here at an annual GNP of less than 5000 US dollars per year. In the year 1970, it was somewhere in the range of 800 to 900 per capita GNP. So in the last five decades, we have increased from 800 to about 5000, but we have got stuck here in this area of middle income trap. There are certain reasons behind middle income trap. Let us understand those as well. When India carried out bank nationalization or green revolution, then the per capita GNP or per capita GDP of the people increased at a sudden pace. It increased probably from let's say $800 to somewhere around $1200 to $1500 US dollars per year. So this increase in GNP resulted in a rise in wages that companies had to pay to the people. However, because of lack of institutional reforms, for example, one institutional reform would be free education. Because of lack of such an institutional reform, the country lost its competitiveness in the export market. In this case, India lost its competitiveness against China. What happens in this case is that the country keeps producing low value goods and does not transform itself into high value goods. For example, a carpenter who was earning let's say $800 per year before now earns $1200 to $1500 per year now. But his value or the technology that he's capable of using in order to produce the same product has remained the same. And therefore the quality of his products has also remained the same. 
in order to justify this higher per capita income it is important that he is able to produce high value goods in this case products that can be competitive against companies like ikea that are producing assembled furniture in the market which is far more qualitative as well as competitive against the same old products presently the high value added market can be the market of artificial intelligence the market of robots the market of data centers for internet in the economies but india lags behind in all these three as well and therefore it is still stuck in the middle income trap now what is the impact of middle income trap when an economy gets stuck in the middle income trap the domestic as well as foreign investors realize that their investment in the economy might not produce results therefore low investment when investment is low then the present employment transforms or converts itself into high unemployment in the future which we are facing presently and therefore growth slows down similarly industrial diversification also reduces or minimizes because of lack of investment in the economy in various sectors the labor market conditions also start deteriorating because the quality of labor has not transformed and at the same time the demand for labor is also not increasing because people or investors are not expecting enough from the economy i hope you've now understood the two long term reasons of lack of institutional reforms and middle income trap which can stop transformation of an economy from a low income group to a higher income group the third major long term reason behind economic slowdown in india is government intervention and license raj which still stays in place A very good example of the same problem that India is facing is the present deal which happened between India and French company Rafale. In this case HAL was pushed behind which is a government entity and the contract to intermediate between Rafale and Indian government was given to Anil Ambani's company. Now there are justifications behind this decision of the government but one thing is clear planning is still very centralized as well as discretionary in India which means that if the central planning authority in this case the central government decides to do something which might go against the rule book which might go against the laws and policies or which might go against the conventional methods being followed by the governments it does not matter because they have the power to do so this means that license raj permit has combined with crony capitalism in order to create a bigger dinosaur for economy like india now that we have understood the three major long term problems that is affecting indian economy let us talk about the immediate reasons that is also creating a vicious cycle of economic slowdown and affecting the indian economy the first one here is problem in demand because of unpaid dues in schemes like pm kisan and anji narega let us understand briefly what exactly does this mean let's say this is the government this is mg narega and pm kisan beneficiaries now the government pays certain amount of regular money to pm kisan and mg narega employees and these people are provided two things number one they are provided money and number two these are the people who create demand so what happens is once they are given this money these are the people who create demand in terms of consumption in terms of savings and in terms of investments so this money acts as a money multiplier if it goes to the bank it acts as a multiplier if it goes uh into consumption because it changes hands and at the same time even if it is invested it acts as a money multiplier now this demand is what drives the economy at the same time by providing money to mg narega and pm kisan employees or pm kisan beneficiaries you are creating employment in the economy as well which helps in a consistent development in the economy however presently we are facing the problem of high unpaid dues in the economy with respect to pm kisan and mg narega beneficiaries when these people are not provided enough money then the demand consistently goes down both in urban as well as rural areas when the demand from consumers point of view goes down at the same time the supply from the producers point of view also starts going down because let's say total of uh, 10 tons of uh, potatoes were consumed in the entire economy in the last year however because of the slowdown and reduction in demand now the consumers are consuming on the whole only 5 tons of potatoes because of this reduction in demand the production of this agricultural product will also go down however the farmer has to bear certain fixed expenses for example the expense of 
interest on his tractor, the expense on lease, the expense of lease on the land, the expense of fertilizers and so on and so forth. Because of these fixed expenses, there is a price pressure on the supplier. And because of this price pressure, he has to increase his margins, he has to increase his selling prices. For example, the total cost of 10 tons of potatoes was let's say rupees 100 per kg. However, only 5 tons of potatoes are now being produced and sold and demanded and therefore the price will be somewhere around 175 to 200 because there are a lot of fixed expenses that the supplier has that the farmer in this case has. This creates two major vicious cycles. Number one, the cycle of stagflation and number two, the cycle of inflation. As you can see here, inflation has happened in the economy, but at the same time, because of reduction in supply of goods and the reduction in demand, st stagnation in the economy can also be seen. So this vicious cycle, which keeps repeating itself and keeps intensifying itself, is what is happening in the Indian economy presently. And the reason is reduction in demand because of demand creators like PM Kisan and MG Narega. The second immediate reason that is creating economic slowdown in the economy is a reduction in agriculture production in the economy. Now this does not limit itself to agriculture in the area of manufacturing as well as in the area of services the same is being seen. However, in the area of agriculture it has been seen to be more pronounced. Agriculture production has been going down in the economy and in Q2 we uh, in Q2 of 1920, we experienced a slowdown. Why? The reasons are two. Number one, number one, because of high unemployment in the econ economy, the demand conditions in the economy are going down. And because of this reduction in demand and increase in unemployment, investment in agriculture is not happening at the scale that is required. When we're talking about investment, then we are referring to both domestic investment as well as international or foreign investment. Both kinds of investments are actually not happening in the economy. People are pulling out their money from the economy. The ultimate impact of this is that production starts going down and again the economy starts entering the era of stagflation or the area vicious cycle of stagflation. So we have gone through two immediate reasons. Number one, demand creators like MG Narega and PM Kisan being affected and therefore resulting in less demand in the economy. Number two, major sectors like agriculture and manufacturing not producing enough because of reduction in demand and because of reduction in investment in the economy. The third major reason which shows that economic slowdown is being faced by Indian economy is the reducing electricity generation in the economy. You must have gone through various conferences on sustainable development which happen year on year and are being participated by India. In those conferences, India always says we cannot reduce our electricity generation and consumption coming out from coal and fuel because that determines the level of development in India. And here we see that electricity generation is going down, which means that electricity consumption is going down, which ultimately means that development is being stopped. Now, what are the reasons behind this falling electricity generation in the economy? There are two major reasons. Number one, a slowdown in manufacturing because the industrial sector is a major consumer of electricity in the economy. And number two, increased penetration of renewable energy sources. Now, you might wonder that this is a positive point if renewable energy sources are increasing in the economy. This would have been positive if the major supply of these renewable energy sources were being made by India. But the major capital investments in renewable energy sources, for example, wind turbines or solar panels is being made through imports coming from countries like China, Bangladesh and Vietnam. Therefore, Although we are increasing the penetration of renewable energy sources, at the same time, we are not able to create enough employment or jobs from the investments in renewable energy sources. The next major reason behind immediate economic slowdown in India is the global trade war. Now, what exactly happens when there is a global trade war? If two or more major powers in the economy, in the global economy, are not comfortable with each other and affect global trade because of sanctions on each other, it affects exports to those countries, exports to other countries as well as imports from various countries. The same is happening in the case of India. We are not able to export as much to countries like US, China, European nations as well as many Western Asian nations. Therefore, exports have gone down. Because majority of our imports are necessities in nature, for example oil, we cannot reduce their supply or their import in the economy. The final result is a high co cost of imports and at the same time a lower revenue generation from exports. 
when the revenue generation from exports goes down and at the same time the cost of imports or the final price that we have to pay for imports goes up the result is higher fiscal deficit and lower fiscal space for expansion in the economy however there are two more immediate reasons which deserve some discussion number 1 is gst and number 2 is demonetization we hear a lot about the fact that gst is affecting indian economy but what is the chain of events that results in gst affecting indian development and secondly how has demonetization actually impacted indian economic growth let's talk about gst first now gst has resulted in a rise in cost for majority of non luxurious items for example food clothing etc etc a high cost means less profits for the manufacturer and therefore less economic growth at the same time a high cost of these necessities means less demand of these necessities by the lower and the middle income class which affects directly their survival in the economy and lastly because of administration related problems of gst many startups are facing failures because of administration costs that they have to bear to comply with the gst secondly demonetization now what demonetization has done is that it has sucked out immediately the ca- cash in the economy the lower and middle income group as well as the msme sector are completely reliant on cash for their immediate needs because of sucking out of cash from the economy msmes are witnessing a lot of failures and at the same time because of low cash in the economy the lower and middle income group has stopped demanding as much products as they used to demand before the result is low economic growth in the economy and a vicious cycle of economic slowdown so these were the major short term as well as long term reasons which are affecting indian economy and pushing it into a vicious cycle of economic slowdown which can result into a recession if you like this lesson and found it useful do not forget to subscribe to the channel press the bell icon so that you keep getting notifications about my future videos on economics and finance all the best take care